everybody, it's Neely here. I have not checked in for a very long time, and I just thought I'd pop on for a little while and let you know how I'm doing and what's been going on with me, and give you some uh, details about my food plan, diet, whatever you want to call it, that I've been on recently, and um, yeah, just an update on how I'm doing. I am currently 33 weeks pregnant, so getting really close to the end. Um, our baby girl, who we decided to name Charity Ruth, and call her Ruthie for short, um, she is doing great, and she should be arriving sometime in early April, so we're excited about that and can't wait. Um, I will try to throw in a picture of my baby bump right here. fantastic um, and doing really well both physically and emotionally and mentally all areas I decided to go on a strict plan starting in January after the holidays and um, I did well over the holidays as far as making good food choices but of course there were indulgences and um, you know just regular holiday treats that were in there I was very happy with the fact that I did not overdo it. At least I don't feel I did. Um, it wasn't like, you know, one treat turned into a excuse to overeat. Um, I felt like I was very balanced in how I um, approached the treats that I had and enjoyed them and then kept as much as possible to my healthy eating plan. Um, but then in January, I decided to go strict and I want to stay um, really strict until the baby comes. I want to do my best to get my um, digestion as healthy as possible, get my gut healthy so that when the baby is born, um, she will have the best uh, start in life because the baby gets her first gut bacteria from me when she um, goes through the birth canal. And so the healthier my gut is, the healthier hers will be. And that first population of gut bacteria I've read is so very important for the health of um, the baby for their entire life. So I am trying to um, make really good nourishing choices for my body and just be as healthy as possible and give my little girl Ruthie the best chance as possible. So what I decided to do was um, something called a Whole30. And I know that there have been a couple other people that have talked about it recently. Um, Jesse and Debbie are the ones that I know of specifically. And um, I decided to start on January 1st. And it is basically an elimination diet and a very strict form of the paleo diet. So, um, of course, with paleo, you don't do grains, legumes, or dairy. And then there are some additional... Um, restrictions when you're on the Whole30. Like, for example, no making healthy treats like paleo cupcakes or paleo pancakes or, you know, pizza crusts. Basically, you just want to focus on eating whole real food and um, plenty of it. It is definitely safe for pregnancy. Um, they talk about it on their website and in their book that it's just fine for um, for during pregnancy, so that's no worries there. Instead of me trying to tell you all about it, I thought I'd read just a little bit off of their website about it just to give you a quick overview. Um, it was an incredible experience for me, and I feel like it f delivered what it promises, which is a metabolic reset, basically, and um, helping you get over hunger and cravings and getting over emotional eating, um, I feel like it does a lot of the things that HCG does, um, going on a round of HCG as long as you do it, you know, with the right mindset and not using it as a diet. Um, I feel like it gives you that same metabolic reset um, as HCG does, and but of course then without the restriction of the HCG and without the extreme rapid weight loss. So I'm just going to go ahead and read um, some of off their website so that you can kind of get a basic overview of what the program is. What is the Whole30? Certain food groups like sugar grains, dairy, and legumes could be having a negative impact on your health and fitness without you even realizing it. Are your energy levels inconsistent or non-existent? Do you have aches and pains that can't be explained by overuse or injury? 
Are you having a hard time losing weight, no matter how hard you try? Do you have some sort of condition like skin issues, digestive ailments, seasonal allergies, or fertility issues that medication hasn't helped? These symptoms may be directly related to the food you eat, even the healthy stuff. So how do you know if and how these foods are affecting you? Strip them from your diet completely. Cut out all of the psychologically unhealthy, hormone unbalancing, gut disrupting, inflammatory food groups for a full 30 days. Let your body heal and recover from whatever effects those foods may be causing. Push the reset button with your metabolism, systemic inflammation, and the downstream effects of the food choices you've been making. Learn once and for all how the foods you've been eating, how the foods you've been eating are actually affecting your day-to-day -day life and long-term health. And then <clears throat> the whole 30 program as outlined. Eat real food. Meat, seafood, eggs, tons of vegetables, some fruit, and plenty of good fats from fruits, nuts, oils, and seeds. Eat foods with very few ingredients, all pronounceable ingredients, or better yet, no ingredients listed at all because they're totally natural and unprocessed. Don't worry, these guidelines are outlined extensively in our free shopping list. More importantly, here is what not to eat during the duration of the Whole30 program. Omitting these foods and beverages will help you regain your healthy metabolism, reduce systemic inflammation, and help you discover how these foods are truly impacting your health, fitness, and quality of life. Do not consume added sugar of any kind, real or artificial. No maple syrup, honey, agave, nectar, Splenda, Equal, NutraSweet, Xylitol, Stevia, etc., Read your labels because companies sneak sugar into products in ways you might not recognize. Do not consume alcohol in any form, not even for cooking, blah, blah, blah. Do not eat grains. This includes but is not limited to, and you guys know what grains are, so I'm not going to read all those. Um, and yes, corn, for the purposes of this program, corn is a grain. This also includes all the ways we add wheat, corn, and rice to our foods in the form of bran, germ, starch, and so on. Again, read your labels. Do not eat legumes. This includes beans of all kinds. Blah, 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 beans of all kinds. No peanut butter either. This also includes all forms of soy. Soy sauce, miso, tofu, tempeh, edamame, and all the ways they sneak soy into food like lecithin. Do not eat dairy. This includes cow, goats, sheep's milk products such as cream, cream cheese, um, kefir, yogurt, even Greek yogurt, and sour cream, with the exception of clarified butter or ghee. Do not consume carrageenan, MSG, or sulfates, sulfites, or something. These ingredients appear in, if these ingredients appear in any form on the label of your processed food or beverage, it is not for the Whole30. And do not eat white potatoes. This is somewhat arbitrary, but if you're trying to change your habits and improve the hormonal impact of your food choices, the best it's best to leave white, red, purple, Yukon Gold, and fingerling potatoes off your plate. In addition, and this was the most one of the most important things for me because it's something even when I went on a strict paleo diet, I didn't do. So this next one. In addition, no paleo ifying dessert or junk food choices. Trying to shove your old unhealthy diet into a shiny new Whole30 mold will ruin your, prog your program faster than you can say paleo pizza. This means no desserts or junk food made with approved ingredients. No coconut flour pancakes, almond flour muffins, flourless brownies, or coconut, mil coconut milk ice cream. Don't try to replace junk food during your 30 days. That misses the point of the whole 30 entirely. One last and final rule. You are not allowed to step on the scale or take any body measure measurements for the duration of the program. This is about so much more than just weight loss. And to focus on your body, and to focus on your body comp comp composition means you'll miss out on the most drastic and lifelong benefits this plan has to offer. So no weighing yourself, analyzing body fat, or taking comparative measurements during your Whole30. We encourage you to weigh yourself before and after, however, so you can see one of the more tangible results of your efforts when your program is over. 
So that is the basic overview. And they have a book that they wrote, and I read it um, before and during, like right when I was starting. And I have to tell you, it is the best nutrition book I think I've ever read. Um, I was telling uh, some other people, I don't think I've been this excited about a nutrition book since I read Pounds and Inches, you know, what it was, three or four years ago. So um, I'll show it to you. It's right here. It's called It Starts With Food by Dallas and Melissa Hartwig. And it is easy to read. Um, and it is amazing. Not only is it, it very sound um, in regards to just telling you the science behind the different food recommendations that they make and everything like that, they also um, they talk about emotional eating. They go into very um, strong detail about the specific um, hormonal disruptions that certain foods will have on your body and um, how that contributes to emotional eating and overeating and they just lay it out completely clear, very easy to understand, very easy to read and I would recommend it to anybody. I think it's just the best nutrition book that I've read um, so far. And really if you ever think about doing a Whole30, I would recommend reading the book before you do it um, because it's just like with HCG where someone hears about the program and they may have all the rules of the program down, but if you don't if you don't understand why you're following those specific rules, it makes it so much more easy to try and mess with it and change things. And until you really understand the mechanisms behind um, the rules and why they're there, it just makes it a lot harder to stick to. So I started my whole thirty on January first. And I have to tell you, it was amazing. It was difficult the first few weeks, but after that, I feel like everything they talked about in the book about it being um, a mental reset and um, a metabolism reset, it was totally true. My hunger and cravings are 100% under control, more than I think they've ever been in my life, and definitely more than they were over the holidays. Um, I could just see improvement, it seemed like, every single day. Um, and now I have absolutely no problem going um, with just three meals a day, and I don't feel hungry in between, I don't feel tempted to snack. When I go out to eat, I don't have that battle inside of, should I order this food that I really like, you know, that's off-plan and junky, or do I just order the salad with no dressing and bring my own dressing, which is not as fun. But it's like my emotional attachment to getting that yummy food is completely gone. Um, and I have, I have no internal struggle anymore. I don't have to have w willpower, I mean, for the most part. Um, it's just, it's simple. I don't have to think about it. Um, and it's like, it's kind of like what Robin talks about with Weight Loss Apocalypse and um, the place that you're supposed to get following her program. And I can see how people, some people following her program can get to that point. For me, I tried it and I, I couldn't, I couldn't get there. Um, and I, I think it's because of some of the foods that I was still eating that were having an impact on my hormones and an impact on my gut. And I had to get those completely out of my diet before I was able to have that reset that I needed to have. So I followed the plan for um, the 30 days in January, but actually about three weeks in, I was doing some more research about my skin issues. And if you guys have been following me for a long time, you remember that I've um, dealt with a variety of strange skin issues and I have not been able to get to the bottom of them and figure them out and get rid of them. And in the research that I've been doing, I have found something that you guys probably, um, maybe a lot of you already know, but I somehow didn't make the connection that psoriasis and eczema are autoimmune conditions. And I just had never made that connection before. I, When I think of an autoimmune disease, I think of lupus or MS or um, arthritis and those, you know, big big um, diseases, chronic diseases, but um, psoriasis and eczema are also on the same list. So that put me in the direction of um, 
trying to figure out what to do if you have an autoimmune condition, which I had heard about before, you know, proto uh, the protocol to go on um, if you have an auto autoimmune condition, but I had never made the connection, so I had never thought of doing it for myself. But once I realized that what I have, um, these skin issues are autoimmune related, I realized I need to go on an autoimmune protocol. Um, and so in the book that I showed you just a minute ago, it starts with food. They talk about um, the autoimmune protocol. If you um, want to add that to your paleo diet, it's just some further restrictions um, after already being um, restricted in the paleo restrictions. And I also got a lot of information from a blog called thepaleomom.com. She has a couple of autoimmune diseases and she has she's a scientist and a very, very smart woman. And she's done a ton of research and a ton of writing on her blog about autoimmune conditions and how you can um, treat and really heal a lot through this autoimmune protocol. And so about three weeks into my Whole30, I also added in the restrictions for the autoimmune protocol. And just really quickly, um, those also include, um, so beyond the grains, legumes, and dairy, which are a no-no, it also um, cuts out eggs, nuts and seeds, nightshades, which include tomatoes, potatoes, except for sweet potatoes, um, peppers, and eggplant. And then you have to be really careful about any kind of spices that have peppers, like chili powder or... Um, our favorite Tony Shasheries has pepper, red pepper in it, and, and like crushed red pepper flakes, that kind of thing. So I cut those things out about the third week of January, and I've been on that autoimmune protocol for um, a little over three weeks, almost four weeks now, and I feel amazing. <laughs> I feel so good. I... Um, have no inflammation, no swelling whatsoever, even though I'm in my third trimester. My skin is getting better. It's slow, um, and that's very common with skin problems. It usually takes quite a while to see um, major uh, healing there, but I have seen improvement for sure. I'm sleeping really well, although I am in my third trimester, so I still have to get up and pee in the middle of the night, um, but that comes with the territory. I... Basically, since January, I haven't gained any weight, and this is the time in pregnancy where you're supposed to be gaining about a pound a week, So, and I know my baby is growing just fine, and she's perfectly healthy, and, so, and also my measurements have gone down. I just did my measurements this morning, and both of my thighs have gone down an inch each, and um, so I'm thrilled with that. I can't complain at all. So I haven't been losing weight, but my weight has stayed the same for about the past six weeks, and I have gained a total of seven pounds from my pre-pregnancy weight. So considering that in my uh, pregnancy books it says you should have gained like 20 pounds by now, I'm feeling really good about that, um, and especially knowing that I'm not starving myself. I'm eating plenty of food. I am almost never hungry. I get hungry before a meal a little bit and I eat and then I'm fine and um, that's something that I've never experienced in my life it's like a food is always like the the thing you know in my mind in the back of my mind all the time nagging me um, thinking about food and it's like that voice is completely gone for me now and um, yeah can you tell I'm excited because I am <laughs> I feel like like freedom from the emotional attachment to food and um, from just the mental stress, the emotional attachment to food and then the emotional attachment to dieting and counting. I'm not counting any calories at all. I have There's like a meal template that you kind of follow where you make sure you get your protein and your veggies and your, make sure you have some fat and, and some fruit. But beyond that, it's, I don't even have to think about it and I'm losing fat and gaining baby, which is <laughs> fantastic, a good trade if you ask me.
So I know that if I, if, when I ever do a um, HCG round again, like to get any baby weight off and get back down to my goal, all the way down to my goal, um, I know for sure that I am going to do P3 as a whole 30. Um, and of course, in the beginning, being careful with stuff like fruit and um, they allow sweet potatoes and um, some starchy vegetables like that. So of course, you have to be careful with that in the beginning. But as far as leaving out the the health, healthy desserts, the P3 treats, uh, I'm going to do that for sure because um, I know for me, they do the same thing or a very similar thing in my body hormonally that a regular, you know, cupcake is going to do. And um, it may not have the physical, um, you know, repercussions like your gut hurting and, um, you know, whatever problems you have when you eat wheat or whatever, but it can still affect you hormonally and it can f affect your appetite. And um, so I know that that will be the key for me, I think, for any P3 stabilization that I ever do in the future. And so I'm really, really excited um, about that if I if I do another round um, to see how, how much that changes things. Because from seeing how it's changed things so far, just where I am right now, um, I know it's going to be better and I'm going to um, finally have success in um, doing the HCG and then stabilizing for sure afterwards. Anyways, so back to the autoimmune protocol. I'm doing that and I'm planning on continuing to do that throughout my pregnancy um, all the way up until the end and then during breastfeeding. One thing that I learned is that um, the immune system works very differently during pregnancy so that the body doesn't turn and attack the baby. And so it's often common for um, people, for women to have their autoimmune um, symptoms either disappear or get lessened um, in their pregnancy, but then to have a really big flare-up afterwards um, when the hormones change again after delivery. And I know I experienced that. If you guys remember, it was a month or a couple months, three months maybe, after I had my daughter Talia that um, I had that massive rash on my face. And I had videos about that and trying to figure out what it was. I thought it was stevia allergy. Um, and I went through a lot of things. But I think now, after what I've been researching, it was um, just a reaction, um, an autoimmune reaction after having my baby um, and my hormones rebalancing and changing. So I am trying really hard to stay strict on this plan and... Um, all the way through pregnancy, and I'm not sure how long I'll go, you know, beyond that um, before I try and do some reintroducing of different foods because um, you also, your hormones also rebalance when you finish breastfeeding, and um, you can also have big flare ups after you wean, that kind of thing. So I'm just gonna try and stay with the autoimmune protocol, and um, once I wean and get my body back to back to zero, I guess, I might try and do some reintroductions of foods and hopefully be able to add some of the things back into my diet that I have excluded now. So that is how I'm doing. I'm sorry this vlog was so long. Um, I, if you can't tell, I'm very excited about, you know, my progress and um, everything that's been going on. So I like to talk about it and I guess I can get long-winded. I hope you guys enjoyed it and have at least gotten something out of it, at least um, understood what I was trying to communicate. Uh, if you have any questions, you can let me know. And I will be updating at some point. I don't know if it'll be with the baby or before the baby, but um, definitely when she comes, I will show her off to everybody. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I have watched some vlogs. I get on every once in a while and just kind of pick through and watch um, some of my favorites and just when I have time. And um, I will continue to do that and keep up with everyone that I can. I hope you all are doing fantastically. And I will talk to you sometime soon. Bye.